I'm pretty sure the only way to actually do this is to put the pancake batter inside a squeezy bottle. I don't see another way to do this. So we got some pancake batter here and this is a buttermilk pancake. We might need to add a little extra water just to make it thin enough so we can make spaghetti. So we're gonna add the water. This is just according to the instructions and we're gonna shake it. And hopefully this is thin enough that we can transfer to the squeezy bottle. Why is there always dry mixture stuck in the bottom? Okay, great. I think it's ready. I mean, it's about to explode. Yeah. Oh, this will be too thick. Oh well, we're still gonna do it. This is just a standard squeezy bottle that I got on Amazon. There are different thicknesses to squeezy bottles. I just picked the thinnest one. Mine's gonna be pancake spaghettini. Pretty good. I don't know how I've done that without spilling, but I did it. I might need to add a little bit of water if this is too thick. Wait, I'm stupid, but I think it'll be fine. <sighs> so let's make some pancake spaghetti. This is fine. One thing that I noticed on the TikTok is how much butter they used in order to easily peel off the spaghetti. So, so that is exactly what we're doing. Ain't no spaghetti sticking to anything, but my skin might stick to this. It's looking dangerous. Me as an empath, sensing that the creator of this hack loves butter. The only thing that could potentially go wrong here is this being too thick for it to work, which is possible. So this is our first try. Here goes nothing. So that didn't work out. I swear, stuff looks so much easier on TikTok. I'm gonna let this cook a little bit so I can try again. Love that. This is already a great start. One thing that I actually did notice on the video is they only cook the pancakes in one side. So if you go and watch it back, you'll see what I mean. Okay, I guess it's in the way you do this. I, I just need to put more pressure so that it comes out in one go. I'm gonna try my best. Okay, here goes nothing. It's working. Oh, I can even get thinner. Oh, what's going on here? Let's try again. <laughs> now we got pancake all over me, great. Wait, we got this one. This one is basically cooked. Okay, the good thing about pancake spaghetti is that it cooks very fast. Like this is definitely cooked, right? Should we get it out? Let me get it out. Wait. Wait, why does it actually work? Mine looks like udon noodles instead of spaghetti, but the thought was there. Let me remove this artistic interpretation of spaghetti. Similar to a lot of things in life, it takes skill, but once you get there, it clearly works. So this is improved already. I wanna get better at this. This one is so thin, look at it. This is perfect. I can't stop, this is too much fun. I'm just gonna go around. Ooh, I'm playing a dangerous game here. Yeah, I saw that coming. But we made spaghetti, that's for sure. Wait, this is really cute. I am obsessed with this. Not only it's approved because it works and it's cooked on both sides, even though it's very white in one side, but I promise you it's cooked. What can I say? I love it. This is, this is truly one of the best hacks from TikTok. I would say from this year, I would even say of all time. Dramatic emphasis on all time. It definitely cooks better when there's a lot of butter. So I'm gonna get rid of the messed up ones. I think they're cooked. You don't wanna overcook them because if you overcook them, they stop acting like spaghetti because if they're still soft, they actually do act like spaghetti. Like it's reminiscent of spaghetti. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, that literally looks like noodles. It looks like rigetti noodles, but noodles nevertheless. Do you see how they get crispy and then they stop acting like spaghetti? My noodle got stuck in the hole. So there you go. I mean, it's very much giving, it's very much giving noodles to me. We're gonna serve this the way they did on TikTok because that's the only way to appreciate this beautiful Italian delicacy. All I can say is it worked beautifully and I love the process. We're going to enjoy this the way God intended with some extra virgin olive oil and some Parmigiano Reggiano. Let's go with the olive oil first. No, cause this is 
truly quite a new way of eating pancakes. And of course, this looks like something that you'd get at like a state fair or like a theme park or something that you'd buy when you're drunk at 3 a.m. Please act like noodles. Please act like noodles. Me when I make spaghetti. I want to twist it. Would the noodles be noodling? I feel like we could do better. Let's really get in there. This is pancake! <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, it's pancakes. It tastes like great pancakes. It's quite a doughy pancake because they're not very crispy. Really good. In my opinion, this is easily the best way I've ever made pancakes. This is great. I love my life. Chase. <laughs> okay, promise you won't laugh. I have made a terrible mistake. I went on Instacart and I spent $10 on 10 individual butters. My credit card was charged $100 overnight. The next morning I wake up and on my front door I have 200 portions of continental <laughs> butter and chips. 200! <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. And I was too awkward to say this is not what I wanted. So this better work. Well, we have plenty of opportunities for trial and error. Let me make space for some bread. I swear this is uh, some part of the Bible. So we got some bread and my butter is kind of cold, kind of like in between cold and room temperature. I kind of got it out of the fridge a while ago. So this is just the classic butter that you get at restaurants. And what they do in the video is they make tiny holes and then squeeze it out. So let's make tiny holes in the butter. I don't know how many is too many. I don't know if you can see the holes, but this is kind of what we've done. Perfect. I swear if this works. It's supposed to be an easier way to butter your bread. Are you kidding me? Are you joking? Is this a joke? And my butter is cold. Why is the butter not buttering? No, please tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Okay, I'm just gonna do like eight holes in this one because maybe I'm doing too many holes. I'm about to be so mad. I spent $100 in butter in this economy. I'm gonna cry. Because I'm a visionary, I always envision failure. So earlier today, I decided to keep some butter at room temperature in case the problem was the temperature. But I would say if I went to a restaurant and someone served me butter this soft, I would not eat it. It's truly soft. So this one is so soft that I can barely make holes in it. So let's see. Guys. I'm squeezing for my life here. I need this to work. I spent too much money. Maybe I'm just gonna do one set of holes. Let's see, maybe this is the way. I just... I can't. Someone please tell me if I'm doing something wrong. This is the holes. Look what happens as soon as I start squeezing. I, I can't imagine, I'm not even making that much pressure. I can't imagine any different scenario. Okay, I'm gonna do the holes vertical in this one. Yep, it just bursts vertically. <sighs> I'm having a panic attack. What am I gonna do with this butter? All this butter. This is okay. I'm gonna put it back in the box quietly. Let's make a lot of holes. Like so many that it's insane. This is me trying with too many holes. Oh! I'm gonna be so gentle. This is as gentle as I can possibly be. Oh, no. 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 I'm gonna take my butter. I'm gonna leave this place. It's gonna take a while to get all the butter. Goodbye.
One thing's for sure, I am not getting third degree burns thanks to some random people on TikTok. No offense to that person. I've developed trust issues at this point with the whole platform. So this is an ingredient called ice cream salt. It's very cheap, it costs $5 for this whole thing. Like this will last you. I think like a lifetime. I've never seen this before, but it says to pour your ice cream mixture into an ice cream maker canister. So this is clearly like a kitchen ingredient. Like people use this to make ice cream with some professional ice cream equipment. Our professional ice cream equipment is a bottle of Coke and a tiny Ziploc bag. Let's get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna start by putting the ice in the Ziploc bag. This is basically a chemistry experiment at this point. In the tiny Ziploc bag, we're gonna put the Coke. This is completely normal. Okay, I'm not gonna get too ambitious because I can already see this not working. The more amount of liquid that we use, the worse it'll be. Nobody. The technician running my urine test when I forgot to drink water for three weeks. I can't help it but being hilarious. I'm just gonna do exactly what the girl did. I don't know if this is dangerous. I'm gonna assume that it isn't. There's like a tiny little hole here. Okay. Oh, it's like rocks. Look. It's like actual rocks. I was joking that this is a science experiment, but it kind of is. So I'm gonna put the rocks in the ice. Okay, that's probably enough. A little bit more. When I asked for a white Christmas, this is not what I had in mind. So now I'm gonna put the tiny Ziploc bag inside the big Ziploc bag. So let's close this for... Oh, my hands feel itchy. I feel like I'm not being able to cover. Oh no! The whole thing spilled. Um. Okay, that's not ideal. Oh, I forgot to close the Ziploc bag. Ouch. Checking if I still got hands. That came out like a Candy Crush bonus. We're gonna try this again. This time around, I'm not gonna use as much and I'm gonna make sure I ended up using as much, but I'm gonna make sure this is closed. Do you guys see this? It's shut. It's fully shut. Oh wait, I'm gonna remove the air from it. That was a mistake. That's almost vacuum sealed. So I'm gonna put this with the ice and the salt. I'm also gonna remove the air from this bag. I feel like that will help as well. That's better. And now, Is it working? I think I'm gonna be here massaging this for a while. My hand may become ice cream before the coke becomes a slushy. Ouch, that is cold. <laughs> okay, this is still liquid. So I either have to shake this for 20 minutes non-stop or it doesn't work. Why do my hands feel itchy? I'm oh, me checking for necrosis. <gasps> I see ice crystals. I see ice crystals. Elsa when she finally realized she had powers. This is the motivation that I needed. I think it's working. <gasps> it is working. This is the first time I've ever been able to use one of these ice cream hacks. It just worked. Okay, slushy reveal. Time to open our slushy. Oh my God, I really hope this worked because I spent too much time shaking this. It's frozen. That is, that is a slushy and some weird grease. Okay, maybe if we mix it. Yeah, that's better. A slushy it is in like 10 minutes. I would say it took around 10 minutes of shaking, but it is possible. This is not dangerous, right? Cause that salt was suspicious and I used a whole lot of it. Can't say that it's like the best slush in the world. It's just, It's a slushy in consistency, but then it kind of just tastes like flat Coca-Cola. Kind of what it is after all that shaking. A whole lot of effort for very little reward. It's giving soup now, and not even good soup. 
Show me the life hack that you randomly saw one day that is now an unconscious standard practice in your life. I'll go first. I'm using my good butter for this, so this better not disappoint, but I want to say, I already know people are going to say this is a stupid hack, but I'm coming in defense of this hack. There is nothing more annoying than when you have butter that is super cold and then you want to use it and it kind of comes out like that, but then you put it on the bread and you literally, okay, why is this one spreading? But it's difficult to spread, especially on toast. And then you kind of ruin the surface of the toast trying to spread it. So I guess this would be a way to get it in like a soft, like a cloud of butter so you can easily spread it. I don't know. There's definitely a need for this hack. I just don't know if it will work. So I guess we just press and, oh my God, that is really satisfying. Okay, but that is possibly the best thing ever. Why is this beautiful? I love it. Let's see if we'd be able to get this out. Oh my God, this is incredible. Oh, look, it's like a pillow. Look at the consistency of it. Okay, okay, and now it's a clump. <laughs> okay, it was still easy to spread. That actually, that kind of worked. Okay, let me just do it again so you guys can see it. I just need you guys to see how satisfying this is. That's like the most beautiful thing ever. Surprisingly, you can get a whole lot of butter. This is exactly how much butter I'd probably use for one sandwich. It's really easy to spread. Like you kind of have to watch out so it doesn't clump, but even when it does, look, like that works. That is very easy to spread. If this hack had one supporter, it would be me. If this hack had no supporters, I would be dead. I will start doing this. You just gotta make sure you have a tiny one of these, not like a giant one. I even love the way the butter looks after. Look how satisfying that looks. Like, it looks clean. I hate when I go to the fridge and the butter looks gross. Look how clean that looks. This is life changing. And also, it's so much fun to do this. Like, I would literally... I mean... <laughs> Look, it's super fluffy. It's perfect. Look, it spreads so easy. It's literally the best hack that I've tried my entire life. Life-changing. It might be 99% because of how satisfying it is to scoop it, and I just want to carry on doing it. 100% approved. This recipe is made in one of the best restaurants in the world and is made only using one ingredient. The only thing you need to do is pour some milk in a pan, let it cook on a high heat and then cook on a lower heat until it comes off the pan. I just hope that I have the right milk for this one because they don't specifically say what kind of milk. It's 2022. Milk is an abstract concept at this point. When you say milk, I have like four varieties in my own fridge. This is like the best selling milk. It's like a vitamin D grade A pasteurized milk. I don't know. This is like the best selling milk in America. So hopefully this one works. I'm going to keep this at a very high heat to start with because it needs to start at a very high heat. When you pour the milk, you need to hear the sizzle and then slowly let it cook at a very low heat until it comes off the pan. How is this a real thing? And it tastes like caramel. Let's shake the milk. No room for mistake here. And let's make sure this is hot, which might take a little while. Should I increase the temperature? Or is this too much? This feels very hot now. So... We're going to just pour the milk. It's not sizzling. Should it be sizzling? Because it certainly ain't. Oh no, it is. Oh, it smells like burned. Okay, I'm gonna pour already. Should do a little bit more. It smells like burning, it's kind of scary, but it does say to start at a high temperature. So I'm gonna let it cook at a high temperature for like 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, something is smoking in here. It smells like burned. Can I see the smoke? cooking panic. Okay, the milk is boiling. Oh, okay, I see what's going on. Oh, there's a crust in the bottom. The milk is milking. We're gonna keep it at a low heat now because it is milking. Like, something weird is going on. Let me see if I can show you. Do you guys see? What is going on? It's like doing this really weird thing on top. So I basically put it on a low temperature now. Is this gonna explode? Me before I discovered pimple cream. This is mildly horrifying. It's not giving crepe, it's not giving pancake, it's giving none of that. It's giving bubble bath. Ooh. So I guess we're gonna wait. As you can see, and you can even see it now, it's doing something. It doesn't smell burned, surprisingly. I'll show you what it looks like in five minutes? 10 minutes? Who knows? Okay, Google, set up a timer for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, and that's starting now. It's been exactly 15 minutes, and 
This is what it looks like. It's definitely not liquid anymore. It's kind of brown around the edges. I think it's done. It smells like it's ready. Weird looking, but it's not peeling off exactly. I think I'm just gonna attempt. Oh, wait, is this stuck? This is never gonna come out. Oh, it's black. Why is it black already? Stupid Walmart. Wait, I think it's just the edges. It's not ideal already. I know, I'm aware, I have eyes. <gasps> oh no. Oh no. This was not the outcome that I expected, but I accept this outcome. Guess we just fold it. It looks the same as it did on the video. Maybe a little bit darker. If you try this, don't use a pen from Walmart. This pen literally costs $4.99, so what am I expecting? That tastes pretty good. <laughs> it doesn't taste like milk. It tastes like caramel. I hate that I like it. It's great. <laughs> Why is it so good? Listen to it. I like it. I really do. It kind of melts in your mouth. It reminds me of rice paper, but it tastes like caramel. Wouldn't it tell? It would give. It wasn't even the cooking. I think the cooking was right. This pen was already ruined. The non-stick is non-sticking. Wait, the non-stick is sticking. I would make this again. I will make this again. If you have a good pen, try it. This is pretty good. An interesting concept. So we're basically creating a frozen square of Nutella. I think I've done something similar before for cookies. I think I made Nutella discs and then baked the cookies and then the Nutella was kind of melted and that worked. So this might work. So we got the Nutella and we got some parchment paper. This better not stick to the parchment paper. That is the only way that I can see this not working. But overall, this is kind of genius. Frozen Nutella brownies. I'm here for it. Honestly, it's pretty easy. I think the best way to do this, if you want a thick Nutella layer, use a spoon. Maybe with a spatula. I don't have a spatula, so a spoon will be just fine. It's actually really easy to do this. Okay. Oh, it feels like I'm making one of those, you know, the butter boards, which by the way, possibly the stupidest food trend I've ever seen. No offense to anyone loves butter. I love butter. That's stupid. I said what I said, arrest me. It's my opinion. Yeah, that's pretty stupid. This is basically a butterboard dark version, dark mode. I feel like if you're gonna do this, you have to make a thick layer of Nutella because if you don't make a thick layer, it's barely gonna be noticeable. That's it. We're gonna put this in the freezer and I'm gonna make one of Biscoff. I wanna say something controversial yet brave. I've never tried Biscoff. There's like a sugar-free version of Biscoff. I've had that and it's really good. This smells exactly the same, so maybe I tried in videos. I've used this before, I'm sure. So this one now just looks like a peanut butter board. A frozen peanut butter layer. It keeps getting better. If this doesn't peel off here after it's frozen, I'm gonna be so mad. I'm wasting all this spread. Spreading all this spread. I would say I made a similar amount of thickness for both. I'm not looking for perfection here. This looks like when I put peanut butter on the wall so I can cut my dog's nails. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer, both of them. And hopefully, it freezes. Okay, so before I get the spreads, the frozen spreads out of the freezer, I'm gonna pour one layer of brownie batter. So this will be like the bottom layer. I also have a sheet of parchment paper just in case this whole thing is gonna stick. And this brownie mix, it's homemade by a good baker friend of mine, first name Betty, last name Crocker. I would never make homemade brownies for this. So I'm gonna try, I don't have that much batter. Maybe I use the wrong size pan. I don't know, it'll be fine. Can't use more than this because otherwise I'm not gonna have enough to cover it on top. Parchment paper is making this kind of difficult. Just need a little bit more in this corner. Okay. Oh, I don't have a lot to put on top. Okay, wait, change of plans. Let me scoop some out. <laughs> Turns out 
I need you back. Why is there a hole inside my brownie now? For a second, I thought I moved the brownie batter with the power of my mind. Here's what we've been waiting for. This is the frozen Nutella, except I make this slight mistake. I kind of put it inside the oven on a, an incline. And <laughs> now the Nutella is like, Oh, you have to make sure that it's a solid piece of Nutella. That looks really weird. This is actual Nutella. The bits where it was too thin, you kind of got a hole in it. You want to make sure that it's quite thick. So I'm going to put that on the brownie. I mean, it looks like it's going to work. This one, it didn't quite freeze. Even though it was in there for the same exact amount of time. Look at this. I mean, I guess it's kind of working. Don't do this. This does not freeze. I'm still going to use it. Just throw it in there. I mean, it is literally frozen, just not hard. The thick ones kind of work. The rest, not so much. This is probably not ideal, but it'll be fine. I'm just gonna cover it with the rest of the batter. Great. If it's not perfectly covered, it'll also be okay. Okay, the Nutella is kind of melted again. <laughs> like it's kind of acting like a liquid. I have no idea. This has been out of the fridge for two minutes. Maybe this whole thing is not actually real. <laughs> Wait, the Nutella is liquid. And my air conditioning is at 69 degrees. So what is the truth? How did it go liquid so quickly? And the Biscoff didn't even work. And also this looks busted. I don't know about this anymore. I'm gonna bake this for the 25 minutes that it requires on the box. And I'm gonna show you whether this is actually gonna be gooey in the center. My guess, towards no. I officially take every single thing I said back because I think this worked. And I say this, and I say this because obviously it looks great, it's a Betty Crocker brownie, but then if you guys look here and here, you can kind of see the Nutella and the Biscoff kind of peeking out a little bit. It's not blended into the dough, it looks soft. So I'm gonna use the brownie cutter to cut these brownies. I've never used this like this before. The first time, just press it in. That was pretty great. Should have done this all the other times I made brownies. You know what? So I guess, now we just... This is incredible. I think I've used this pen like 20 times. It still blows my mind every time. So if this has truly worked, the brownies are gonna have a layer, like a melty layer in the center. These look incredible. Even if they don't have the layer, I'm not gonna be mad at I'm gonna enjoy every single one of these. What we really wanna know is if there's a melty layer of Nutella. They're still a little warm, but not too much. Is that the layer of Nutella and then just a tiny bit of Biscoff on this side? Wait, I think this one will be better. I'm gonna get a center one. <gasps> the way that actually works. I mean, that is literally impossible to accomplish without the freezing part. No, cause this is truly quite something. <laughs> and you can't even see the Nutella properly cause it kind of blends with the brownie. This is some professional gastronomy level of brownie. Look at this one. Isn't that just beautiful? And they're super soft as well, because obviously with all the frozen layers that we've created, this is incredible. This works. This really does work. And I really didn't want to, you guys saw, I didn't want to give it to them. But in the end, can't argue with perfection. Are you kidding me? This is so good. I'm going to cry. Best brownie ever. No exaggeration. The gooey center makes it taste like a brownie from a bakery, from like a French bakery. Like they've done some piping, some weird thing. In reality, we put Nutella in the freezer. I'll never make brownies the same way ever again. I went and bought a boba glass specifically for this hack, so this better work. We're gonna put hot water on it. I only had plastic ones, but as you saw in the video, it needs to be actual glass. Why is the glass cloudy? It looks like plastic. Oh, this is, yeah, we need to wash this. The glass wasn't cloudy. It was dirty. Me when I look at my reflection at the H&M dressing rooms, I don't even know. <laughs> it was 
Disgusting. This is why you should always wash stuff. Like, I didn't always do that. As we grow older, we learn. So this is our boba glass. It also comes with a boba straw, which is kind of like a thicker straw. So if you try to do this with a normal straw, it's probably not gonna work out, but you can try. This is my worst nightmare. We are going to separate gummy bears by color. What have I done to deserve this? companies when it gets to the month of June. This is a nightmare. I'm gonna make my bubble tea with strawberry milk and I'm a big fan of flavors that just match. I'm not crazy about clashing flavors. I'm gonna do the red ones, which I think, strawberry or raspberry. So I think they'll kind of go with strawberries. So we're only doing the red. Ugh, I have to go by darkness instead of by color. To me, this is exactly the same color, just one of them is darker than the other. So this is the one. Wait, I think I've got wrong ones in here. Ugh! No. Ugh. This is literally my worst nightmare. This one's wrong. Oh, this one's wrong as well. You know what? I'm just gonna make Tutti Frutti bubble tea. I'm pretty sure there's some random things going on in there. We're just gonna pretend like I've done a good job at this. Roll colors are blending into one in my head. I would say this is 99% red. So we've got some boiling hot water and the gummy bears and we're just gonna pour the hot water into the gummy bears. Oh my God. Wait, it's almost melting instantly. I don't know if you guys can see my red blood cells when I get COVID for the fourth time this year. Let's see if this is solid enough to blend it. Oh, that feels really, really weird. Oh, that kind of looks like bubble tea now. They're disappearing. Okay, I need this to be fully liquid, I think. I think we're gonna put this in the microwave for like 30 seconds just so they fully melt because it's like 50% melted, but the water hasn't done a perfect job. It smells so good. It's like the best smell. It smells like fresh raspberry jam. It's a really good smell. So, oh, do you see how sticky that is in the bottom? So I think we gotta mix this with the water until it fully dissolves. It's a really interesting texture. I would say it's pretty well combined now. Like it's very smooth. I can barely see any jelly in it. This feels thick and syrupy, which I think is the way we want it. We gotta put this in the fridge for five hours, which is a long time. But trust me, if it's gonna taste the way it smells, it's game over for the bubble tea shops. You will never overcharge me again, because I will just make this at home. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I just got this out of the fridge and look at this. It's pretty solid. It definitely hasn't been five hours, it's been two hours. So in two hours, you'll be able to get like a pretty solid jelly. It's sturdy, you know, we're not half doing the job. I thought this was gonna be strawberry. I just realized this is raspberry. Either way, I got some strawberry milk. This is about to be great. I'm about to love this. There's nothing that hurts more than this. Now it's ruined. Now I can't even enjoy my drink. Now my day is ruined. It's fine, it's fine. No, it's not fine. We got the strawberry milk. So we're gonna pour the strawberry milk on top of the jelly. This is, it's incredible. That's a whole lot of jelly for this. This was made with gummy bears. The expectations, the bar is set very low. The bar is glued to the floor. So let's, Oh, do you see the milk? That is pretty satisfying. Look at this. Do you see the milk? This is the one. Ooh. So I'm trying to mix the jelly so that it's more like small pieces, kind of like when you buy it. You know the, is it called grass jelly? Grass jelly is usually in small cubes, I think. So I'm kind of going for a grass jelly vibes. Are you kidding me? That looks so good. That looks like real bubble tea. The pieces are like the perfect size. You definitely need like a bubble tea kind of straw. Okay, let's give it a try. That is delicious. That is so sweet. The chewiness of the jelly is literally perfect. I wish I measured how much water I put in it because I was just kind of thinking it was gonna fail. 
It did not fail, spoiler alert. This is incredible, it's one of the best jelly milks I've ever had. I think next time I would probably do a different flavor and then I would do like a milk tea. So like English breakfast with milk, that would be so good. The texture of the jelly is the best part. This is 100% approved. You guys actually have to try this. This is so good. If you've never listened to me before, this has to be the time when you finally do. This is so, so good. Try it, please. Sorry about the weather forecast. We definitely weren't forecasting this. <laughs> oh, now I gotta repaint my ceiling. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by adding some salt to the pasta water. And by some, I mean a lot. Whether it's ramen or like Italian noodles, they better be salty. I hate plain noodles. And to this, we're gonna add the baking soda. Wait, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. No measurements. This is the brand of baking soda that I'm using. We're just gonna add the baking soda. Oh, that seems about right. This is just some good old regular spaghetti. I'm not cheating, this is not ramen noodles. And we're just gonna pour it in the water. Not a whole lot. And now we wait for the noodles to do its thing. I wanna believe. I mean, just because the lady who made the TikTok seemed like a trustworthy person that I would trust with my life, she could be a scammer. No offense, lady, I don't know you. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is ready. And also, I'm just gonna say, I've never seen noodles this foamy. There's so much foam. It almost looks like cream. Look at this. You see all the foam on it? Is this safe to eat? They also smell different. So we're gonna get the noodles out. I'm gonna try to drain them already. Kind of the perfect consistency from both spaghetti and ramen. It kind of looks like ramen. It's very much giving ramen. Oh, suddenly I'm disappointed I didn't cook more. I'm like, oh, this is... I've cooked spaghetti probably a million times in my life. And this, this is different. The texture of it, do you guys see that? That doesn't look like spaghetti. It doesn't even feel, it's like sturdier and stickier. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was gonna be the flavor, but the whole texture of the noodles, look at the way they stand. That's ramen noodles. It even smells like ramen noodles. Do you see that? That kind of looks like almost like ramen egg noodles kind of combination. It just does not look like spaghetti to me. Maybe it's just in real life. That is so weird. How is that even possible? This is so confusing. This is freaking me out. The length of it is very of spaghetti when I'm slurping the noodle. And then it's the flavor of ramen. It's 100% real, but I don't know if I like it. I'm trying to think about what changed about the noodles. The baking soda basically adds like a bitter, almost like a malt, wheaty flavor to it. Yeah, kind of bitter. And then the texture of it, it becomes a lot stickier, less soft. It is fascinating. It almost tastes wrong without any like like a miso soup or like, I don't know, like a chicken stock. I mean, it's 100% real. The lady is trustworthy. I would trust the lady with my life. I mean, I practically have with the amount of baking soda we put in here. That's a lot of trust. It never occurred to me that cakes could be sliced like that. Like that kind of makes sense. Also, what doesn't make sense is this cake. A birthday cake is like $60 and I was like, no. So instead I got three $4 cakes and I stacked it on top of each other. This is the real hack in here. This is the real hack in the whole video. <laughs> this would easily be a $60 cake. No, it's a $12 cake. Pretty proud of that. Always one step ahead. When Taylor Swift wrote Mastermind, she meant this. She meant me. This might not work out perfectly because this is a $4 cake, so just bear with me. We're gonna use this on the side to kind of like keep the slices. So I'm not expecting the first one to be perfect. My mom when I'm the firstborn. Oh, this is, it's kind of fun. Oh, is this too thick? 
No, it's kind of perfect. <gasps> Maybe we've done something. This is genius. Oh, are you kidding me? This was possible all along? Are you kidding me? This was a possible way to slice a cake. This is not real life. I refuse. You could basically cut this in half or you could just eat the whole slice and this in half and there you go, four slices of cake or more because my cake is disconnected. <laughs> Wait, this is genius. And this is a Frankenstein of a cake. This is possibly the single most satisfying thing you'll ever see in your entire life. That is beautiful. This is approved. Nothing could come in between me and this hack. This is honestly beautiful. I'm gonna do another one. So I know what everyone's gonna be thinking. This is too much cake. Nobody wants a slice that big. And I hear you, except I do want a slice that big. <laughs> That is exactly how much I want. Do you know when was the last time I was invited to a birthday party? I'm not exaggerating. It must have been like seven, eight years ago in school. <laughs> okay, no, because this is actually beautiful. You can't see it, but it is. Like the way the slices just come off the cake. Are you kidding me? This is literally incredible. It is so clean. From this, you can basically transfer directly into individual cakes. So let's say this is too much cake for you. We can just do this. Let's say you don't like the frosting on the outside. Great, you can just eat the middle one. It's literally perfect. In my opinion, I would probably want a slice exactly this big. I actually think this is the perfect slice of cake for me because you kind of get everything. You get the center, you get all the nice layers, you get this on the side. This is actually perfect. This hack straight to like top five of the best hacks we've ever had. This, whoever invented this, I hope you are blessed every single day when you wake up in the morning. I hope your toast never goes soggy. Your pillow has six cold sides and you never step on water when you're wearing socks. That's how much I feel like you deserve for contributing into my life in this beautiful way. Does anyone know if cake freezes better whole or in slices? I think in slices. So I'm just gonna carry on with the hack. This was a moment in my life that I will never forget. Look at that, just beautiful. I feel like you could probably even do this without the little board. Look at this. You could just cut it directly in here. And there you go. Oh, you want a slice of cake? There you go. That's perfect. I'm gonna throw a birthday party so I can use this hack. That's how excited I am about this. Confession time. I ordered a pizza last night. I was so tired. The pizza took way too long. It took like two hours for them to deliver it. By the time the pizza got to my house, I was half asleep. So took the pizza to my bed. I grabbed one slice and I don't remember the rest. I fell asleep with the pizza literally on my bed. So all of this to tell you that this pizza it's beyond leftover. This is the idea leftover to test this hack. This is past leftover and into health and safety hazard situation. It's so crusty, the miniature table came with it, like a topping. Like, it is crusty. It is also stale. The bottom of it is even more stale. We're gonna see how this hack actually holds up because trust me, I need it. I'm gonna pick this slice, the biggest one. So this is the slice that I'm gonna be using. If this works, I want to revive this pizza completely. Should we just do the whole pizza? No. If I'm not wrong, they do this with a very high heat. So I'm gonna wait for this to heat up. I changed my mind. I actually wanna heat up the whole pizza because if this works, I wanna see if this works in a real life situation. This is a real life situation. This is very hot. So I don't know if it's gonna work anymore. Maybe we don't have space for the whole pizza. Let's do it in batches. I'm gonna put a little bit of water. Oh, and we're gonna put the lid on it. And this was initially at a high temperature, but now it's at a medium temperature. Why do I feel like I'm burning the pizza? Maybe I got too ambitious. Oh, I feel like I shouldn't have seen that. It's sizzling too much. I also love how the video was originally posted by Domino's and I'm trying it with a Pizza Hut pizza. Brand loyalty, you can't afford me. Trust me, well, I would do it for a free pizza. Oh, it's it's kind of burning in the bottom. It was kind of burning already before. I feel like it wasn't enough water, maybe. I'm gonna have to get this out because 
No, it's not burning. Never mind. It's just not ready. Not as simple as you'd expect, especially if you're heating up a whole pizza. In which scenario do you get a full leftover pizza? Only in my scenario. I'm gonna do a little bit more water because it's not melting. Yeah, I'm not sure about this anymore. Me trying to wash my pizza. Like I wash my sins every morning. It was so dumb, it didn't make any sense. 80% of the dumb, stupid things I say in my videos. Okay, it's working now. We just needed, Oh, it's soup. Oh no, I made pizza soup. It is cooking. <laughs> I made pizza dumplings. Okay, next time I'm gonna just try with one slice. Clearly this was not a move. I ruined a perfectly fine pizza. I'm just gonna wait so I don't ruin the whole thing completely and it's still edible. I'm just gonna let it steam out into the air. Let it out, sweetie. Wait, because I think it's actually working. No, because he looks good and revived. Revived. <laughs> I actually think it worked. I'm not exaggerating. I looked at the pizza. It's not burning the bottom, it's crisping up now, and the cheese is melty. So, this is crazy, but it worked. I don't know how we put so much water in. It looks amazing! I actually have no words. It looks so good! Oh, it's a little soft, this one. It also stuck just a tiny little bit. Do you see the stretchy cheese? The cheese is all stretchy. Wait, because this worked. Just so you guys see the comparison, this was a slice of pizza before. I mean, it's bad. It's pretty damn stale. And this is the pizza after we use the hack. Look how shiny it is. And it's still crispy on the outside. Are you kidding me? Did you guys see the stretchy cheese when I bit into it? I mean, it wasn't crazy stretchy, but this is leftover pizza, so you get my point. It's still a little bit crispy once I bite into it. Wait, let me see if you can hear it. Okay, this is a bite of the crunchy bit. And the cheese is still stretchy. Look, 100% works. Would I use this again? Probably not. I'd probably put it in the microwave. One of the beauties of leftover pizza is that it's kind of gross and it's kind of like, mm, this is like questionable. I might get sick. Might have to call in sick to work on Monday. That's one of the beauties of it, in my opinion. Feel free to disagree. It's a free world. We can have controversial opinions and this is mine. But if you want to try this, it does work. <laughs> I was really excited to try Cool Whip for the first time, but they only had the generic brand, which is fine, I guess. So the reason why I got two is because I want to know what the original one tastes like. And to most of you guys, you probably know what it tastes like. I've just never had it. I'm expecting whipped cream. Oh, oh, it's like marshmallow. Interesting. So this was in the fridge. This is just a fridge one. That is... What's in this? This is incredible. Water, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated vegetable oil, palm kernel oil, less than 2% of milk. It's amazing, it tastes so good. I guess it's sugar and milk. Oh my God, it's incredible. Wow. Now I'm upset that this hack is supposed to improve this because I think this is pretty damn perfect. So apparently if you put this in the freezer, this makes a great ice cream. I can already taste it. I can smell it. It's gonna be great. This is straight out of the freezer. The exact same product, same brand. I'm assuming it will look the same. It looks the same, but solid. So let's see, would you be able to scoop this? Oh my God, it's literally like ice cream. I mean, I'm fascinated by the product in general. It looks like vegetable shortening. That is the closest consistency to this. Oh, that is weird. I would describe this as a cold marshmallow. Uh, you can bite into it. I would say this is better than ice cream, both of them. Superior to ice cream, but not like ice cream at all. It's like a chewy ice cream. Does that make sense? If you've ever tried it, you know what I'm talking about. If you've never tried it, I'm sure this sounds stupid, but it makes sense. It's chewy ice cream. People who've had frozen Cool Whip before, please comment below, confirm, validate my feelings. It's chewy ice cream. It's not regular ice cream. 
I mean, it's, it's great. I'm gonna put both of them in the freezer for the simple fact that it lasts longer flavor-wise. I guess if I knew this one before, I would probably prefer the ice cream one because this one is just soft. It's just whipped cream really, but better. And this one, it's truly a fascinating texture. I don't know how to describe this, but marshmallow ice cream. It's great. We're both incredible, but for now both are going to the freezer because I want this to last as long as it possibly can. I want this to last forever. One thing that I never liked is the process of making s'mores. It's too messy. And then when you bite into it, it goes everywhere. Like you get like stretchy marshmallow and it's melted chocolate all over your hands. And it's like, I just hate it. For someone with the same textural issues as me, this is heaven on earth. We got a sheet of just foil paper. I never know this, but does foil paper have an inside and an outer side? Or is, is it just whatever? Cause they're different food for thought. So, we're gonna grab the ice cream cones. These are just sugar ice cream cones. So, oh, these are so tiny. Immediately, no. What the hell is wrong with this? What is this, an ice cream cone sample sized? I think what they've done in the video is they use, they use some chocolate chips and they just put it in the bottom, which I thought it was actually genius. So I'm gonna put the chocolate chips in the bottom. I have the tiniest ice cream cone in the world for some reason. So this is how many I can fit, which is not a lot. I wish I could fit more. Once this melts, it'll probably fit more. Uh, no, I don't wanna get too brave. And then we're gonna put a marshmallow on top. Should I put two marshmallows on top or am I getting two adventurers? Let's do two, screw it. Oh no. <laughs> I'll still eat it, just not for this. So I'm gonna transfer the chocolate chips. I'm gonna try to fit two marshmallows without bursting, which looks something like this, which it's strangely delicious looking. Like it looks like ice cream, but are you for real? Is this seriously happening in real time? Imagine how tired I am. The universe said one marshmallow per cone. And I said, no, no thanks. I choose my own destiny. This is very noisy. I hate it as much as you do, but I'm sorry, just gotta be done. So we're going to wrap the ice cream cone. And now we're going to cook it in a fire, which is um, just the stove behind me. That's the only fire. Well, I do have a candle there. That would take too long. Maybe I shouldn't be using wooden ones, but that's the only ones. I have. Hmm. Do we have anything made of metal? No, I don't. You'll be fine. I'm just gonna hold the cone like this and try to cook it without burning the wooden tongs. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Oh, that was aggressive. So I guess we just go like this. I could probably put it in here. Can I just leave it there? <gasps> oh! Oh no! Did you see that? The marshmallow was leaking. This is probably easier in a campfire. That's exactly what we wanted. I'm feeling brave. I'm gonna increase the temperature just slightly. So just imagine this is done outside in the outdoors. I haven't been outside in three weeks, so I'm gonna turn it again just to make sure that it's evenly cooked. Why is foil paper burning? Isn't that the whole point? Like, why is it burning? We're just gonna cook the marshmallow bit on top. This is the most important part, the top bit. <gasps> Oh, I would go as far and say that the marshmallow is cooked. So this is probably very, very hot right now. Oh, it's actually not that hot. So should we open it? It smells like burned rubber because the foil paper burned. How does that make any sense? Imagine if it's all black. Imagine if it's like coal on the inside. Oh no, why is it like that? But that's like kind of a good thing, right? Look how satisfying that looks on top, the melted marshmallow. Wait, this is kind of ideal. It smells like a real s'more. Wait, I kind of want to cut into it instead of biting. Wait, I don't know. Oh, I can't decide. Okay, I'm gonna cut into it. Will I be able to cut into it? No. It is definitely burned on the side, but I feel like it kind of makes it smell like a real s'more, like the toasty bit. So actually that's the bit that I want to eat first. Oh my god. It's so good. Are you kidding me? It is literally like 
perfect. Look at the marshmallow coming out on the side. This is literally like the perfect s'more. And wait, we didn't even get to the chocolate yet. Oh my God, that is perfection. I really like the burnt bits, turns out. This is genius. Wow, this is like one of the best things I've ever eaten. The cookie burned just enough to give it like a campfire, kind of like s'mores flavor. The marshmallow could not be more perfect, just melty, liquidy. And the chocolate on the inside, it's like soft and like, oh. And the whole thing is like melting. And to be honest, I ate it kind of weird because I just wanted to show you guys the inside. The fact that the whole thing took literally five seconds, not five seconds, but a good 30 seconds in the fire. I'm gonna bite the whole thing now. Oh my God. <laughs> I probably bit more than I can chew, but this is an experience that I will take with me for the rest of my life and I will never forget. So that was great. And the best part, it melts all the way to the bottom and in the bottom you get a similar end as an ice cream cone. Best of both worlds. I'll never eat a regular s'more. Ew. Just thinking of a regular s'more, I hate it. This is the way. I'm not crazy for rice cakes. I mean, I've definitely had a few rice cakes phase, but in general, this is just, it's such a boring snack. But this, this could definitely change my mind. I mean, this is for sure. I can't remember if they used three layers or two layers. I'm gonna use three layers, even if they didn't. It's my prerogative, three layer rice cake. So we got the rice cakes. I'm doing a three layer. In between each layer, I'm gonna do some peanut butter. So we got some peanut butter here. This is creamy peanut butter. This is just the one I have at home. Crunchy would be incredible. I'm just gonna spread the peanut butter. I don't wanna go too crazy though, because otherwise this is gonna fall apart and it will not be cute with the melted chocolate. This is already really soft. Technically, you only need two layers of peanut butter. Oh, this will be good, it'll be good, it'll be good. I have the vision in my head. So I'm just gonna spread this. And this is kind of what we get. I wanna do a fourth layer. Am I crazy for wanting more? Nobody. Nick Cannon about having children. I wanna do one more. Also Nick Cannon. I'm gonna do one more. It's what I want. The thing is, I sometimes forget. I often forget. This is my YouTube channel. I can do whatever I want. If I wanna post a three hour video of me buttering layers and layers of peanut butter, I might. It sounds like a great idea. Who cares? This is all a simulation. I'm entering my, this is all the simulation era and I think it's dangerous because it gives me a different kind of power and I've been slowly losing my amount of cares. The number is too small. I'm gonna just do another layer of peanut butter just because I want to. We actually elevated this. Look at this. This looks substantial now. Now it feels right. Before it felt too short like it just it wasn't giving and I wanted to kind of come out on the sides but I do want to squish it a little and onto the melted chocolate. So this chocolate is melted melted. I don't know why I'm showing it to you like you've never seen melted chocolate. <laughs> I don't want the chocolate to be too hot though because imagine if the peanut butter just melts. That would be sad. Also, I think they use dark chocolate but this is just so much better. I just realized something was gonna go wrong. Our peanut butter sent- What the hell? Get out of here. Why is the parchment paper acting like a rattlesnake? So if I didn't use parchment paper this was probably gonna stick right? Always a mastermind. I told you, the mind of a mastermind. This melted chocolate ain't melting. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's just becoming kind of grainy. We're still gonna do it. So I'm just gonna apply the chocolate on top. Oh, this is gonna be so good. I need to give you a close up of the chocolate falling on it. Can you just imagine this? Yeah, you can just imagine this. <laughs> no, but can you just imagine when this is all solid and crunchy, it's going to be so good. I don't know what to do about the bottom though. I guess it will not be covered in the bottom, right? Because how else would you do it? So I'm just gonna cover the sides. But that is a mess that I'm gonna clean up. But it is also beautiful. I'm just gonna smooth it out. Yeah, I can't smooth this out. I'm gonna have to use my hands for this. I don't know why, it's not working. You need a spatula or something for this. Oh, the peanut butter is melting. Okay, this is not as easy as I thought it would be. I'm sure it'll be fine once it solidifies, but it's not easy. Okay, I've covered two sides successfully. The trick is to 
I don't know. I don't know what the trick is. When I find out, I'll let you know. I don't think this qualifies as a trick. The peanut butter is staying in the center, so that's a good thing. I am probably gonna have to transfer this somewhere else because this is way too messy. If it solidifies like this, it would be a hate crime. Or not. Who cares? It's all a simulation. So I'm gonna leave it exactly as it is. I'm gonna top it up with some salt. Ooh, that salty peanut butter with the chocolate, the crunchiness. It kind of looks like cake, but it's better than cake because cake can be boring and this is going to be crunchy delicious. I believe in this. I cannot wait to show you when this cools down. Okay, so, okay, it doesn't look as messy anymore. As soon as it goes in the fridge, it actually looks kind of like professional made, especially if we get rid of all of that excess. That looks pretty incredible. It's definitely not covered in the bottom. Well, <laughs> Partially. In order for me to live my best life, I need this to be crunchy once I cut into it. So this is the moment. Oh my God, if this is not crunchy, I'm gonna be so disappointed. It looks like a gourmet dessert on this plate. Please be crunchy, please be crunchy. Oh, that was perfection. Oh, that looks so good. That looks incredible. And then all the chocolate on the sides. The crunch though. Almost broke the plate, but it was worth it. You can divide this into like four, which is actually kind of like the perfect size if you want to snack on it continuously throughout the day. So is it going to be crunchy once we bite into it? We were wondering, but the peanut butter does stay in the center. It's honestly kind of just all worked out and I was not trying too hard. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. What? I have no words. I don't have the scientific explanation for this, but it tastes like a Ferrero Rocher. It literally tastes like, I don't know, like expensive chocolate. This is incredible. If I had my eyes closed, this is like the richest, textural, sweet, salty, balanced snack that I've ever had. This is, does not taste like rice cakes. I wouldn't even know there's rice cakes in this. It's incredible. And with crunchy peanut butter, I think this would be even better. I'm gonna do that next time, but this is... I literally, like, I was speechless. That's when you know. It happens a lot, to be fair. But speechless, nevertheless. Just try it. Please, try this. <laughs> Why has this never occurred to me? Like, this actually makes sense. You should be able to bake a pancake. It's so simple, yet yeah, so genius. Me to my brain. They did use some non-stick spray, so I'm just using, you know, the standard non-stick spray. And I'm not using any parchment paper, even though I would normally. I'm gonna pour the batter and it's gonna slip out. <laughs> That's how non-stick this is. It's gonna be bouncing off the walls. Shake and pour, more like shake and bounce. This is just, uh, you know, the standard Betty Crocker mix. So I'm gonna pour the batter. I'm just gonna use all of it because that seems about right. I know it's the fun part because we get to do the toppings and I actually really like what they've done, which is do different toppings in different parts because I feel that for me. Sometimes I'm like, oh, now I want chocolate, but now I'm kind of over it. So I want something different. So you could even do like a bacon side. Maybe that'd be kind of gross. Could be kind of good. I've got some strawberries. These are already washed and ready to use. So I'm gonna do half of it in blueberries, blackberries, and strawberries. Some of these strawberries are a little bit big, but it's okay. I love strawberries. This looks incredible. This actually looks beautiful. Like it looks like a wedding cake. That is the only thing I've ever seen that looks like this. Like, are you kidding me? It's giving wedding cake. They're thinking a little bit too much now. But like, it's giving wedding cake to me. And that's all that matters. <laughs> I haven't been to any weddings in five years. This mix is mostly strawberries. Oh, I'm getting too close to the other side now. Oh my God, I just know this is gonna be so good. Okay, this one went too far. And now for this side, I'm gonna do chocolate chips. These are semi-sweet chocolate chips, which is, I think, what they used. There's no such thing as too many chocolate chips, clearly. So this is gonna be like my breakfast and this is gonna be my breakfast dessert. 
always thinking ahead. This is great. I want this to work, guys. I cannot even tell you how much I want this to work. I hate flipping pancakes and making a hundred of them. I want to bake it in one go with different flavors. This is genius. Cover it in pancake syrup. Mmm, that would just be so good. Let's bake this at, I don't know, I'm gonna watch the video for how long this bakes for, but I think it's like 20 minutes. So one final look before we put it in the oven. Oh, it looks so good. I have to be really careful because this is still very, very hot, but this, it looks pretty incredible. It looks like a combination between a, like a sheet cake and a pancake. It was a little more golden on the video, but I did not want my pancakes crunchy. I wanted them soft like a real pancake. Uh, so I took it out a little bit earlier, I think. I can kind of show you now. I'm kind of sad that the chocolate chips kind of melted to the bottom, but, but I'm glad that you can still see the strawberries and everything else. So I'm gonna cut this in a way. Okay, so this is gonna be the chocolate chip side. It's truly just like pancakes, like regular ones. Like nothing weird about the texture. And then I'm gonna cut it in the center. I know this is like a giant pancake, but it's what I want. <laughs> I wanna get a slice of the chocolate chip first because you can't really see the chocolate chips. It comes off pretty easy. This is the chocolate chip side. I mean, can I hold it? Oh, that is incredible and it's fully cooked. You see how it's fluffy all throughout? This is like the perfect pancake. Look at the color on this. Like that beautiful, like it's like soft, but still like kind of toasty. This is pretty great. I almost want to flip it like this because this side looks better. Why am I acting like I just invented square pancakes? And now for the fruit one, this is definitely the most beautiful one. That is a beautiful slice of pancake. And let me show you the bottom of it. You can do two completely different types of pancakes in literally one go. If you like fruit and like cakes and things like that, you'd, you'd probably love this. I still want this to be like a real pancake, especially the corners. I don't want like a stale, dry, weird cake situation. It's a pancake. I can't even tell if there's a difference. It's slightly different, but I can't explain in which way because it's just as delicious. It might be better. I love it. I really do. This is really good. You can literally hold it like it's, I guess, a pancake that you hold with your hands. <laughs> I'm gonna bite the blueberry and the strawberry. That is very good. That's incredible. Oh no. <laughs> This one is even better than chocolate chip and you guys know how much I love chocolate chip. It's like a mixture between pancakes, a blueberry muffin, cake. I don't know, it's so good. It's honestly so good. And so much easier. How much easier is this? This is incredible. I really want to try this because I love a chip. I just love dipping something in sauce. And like, this was like the perfect one, transforming something that we already have at home, a bagel, into a chip. Except I looked at my bagels and this is a tragedy. I only buy pre-sliced bagels. <laughs> so this is, can this be a chip? if you want the world's tiniest amount of dip, but I'm still gonna do it because I wasn't gonna buy new bagels because I had a perfectly fine batch at home. So we're gonna use this one. It's all going to work out. So I'm gonna do exactly the same as they've done in the video, which is just cut the bagel. Just eat the biscuit. <laughs> Sometimes my head is a mixture of a lot of TikTok sounds, intrusive thoughts, my inner saboteur, and once in a while it's a remix of all of the above. <laughs> These are not chips. We have can establish that. So what are they? I don't know, we're gonna find out. Are we making bagel croutons? Possibly. Is that a hack? No. Does anyone care? Maybe. Do I? Not in the slightest. I just wanna eat a crouton. Maybe, maybe we all need a crouton. So I'm gonna transfer the bagels into a pan. I think they did this in a separate bowl. There's no point in doing that. What are they, crazy? They love doing the dishes? Spoiler alert, it's probably not gonna be a chip. It's not gonna be the bagel chip that we dreamed, but it's gonna be something incredible. So I'm gonna drizzle this with olive oil. And I'm gonna be very light with the olive oil because I don't wanna have to transfer this, drain the olive oil. I want this to be like the perfect amount. And now I'm gonna use some Parmesan cheese. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's gonna be so good. Oh, these are basically gonna be cheese chips now, or cheese non-chips. The only other thing they used in the video was pepper, and they actually went quite heavy on the pepper, which I think made it look so good. That's a whole lot of pepper, but I think it's gonna work out for the best. A little more sprinkle on top, just a little more drizzle of olive oil. Yeah, that was not a drizzle, but it'll be fine. I'm gonna put this in the oven for the five minutes. I don't have an air fryer, but I have an oven that has a fan inside. That's exactly the same as an air fryer. We've had this fight in the comment section before. It's my opinion, it's the same thing. An air fryer is a tiny oven, but I know people feel very strongly about this, so fight in the comments. Not in my DMs, please. <laughs> I'm gonna bake this. Here we've got our bagel chips. They actually don't look too different than they did before we baked it, but they're pretty crispy. They're well baked. If you eat a lot of these, the roof of your mouth will probably hurt tomorrow. You're gonna be eating oatmeal for a few days. So I'm just gonna transfer them to a bowl. Oh, all the parmesan kind of became super, super crispy. You can actually put it on top as seasoning, all the crispy parmesan. Almost like crispy onions. In the video, they had like an amazing dip for the chips. Um, I looked in my fridge and all I could find was one honey mustard from McDonald's. It's probably expired. One hot mustard from McDonald's and another honey mustard from McDonald's. So <laughs> I was gonna hide this from you, but we've reached that point where I'm gonna tell you what the dip is. It's expired sauces. They're probably not expired. I'm not gonna check. No happiness can come from that. I'm just gonna squeeze it all out here. And I'm mixing all the honey mustards. And I don't have a spoon now, so I'm just gonna use the tray. Great. <laughs> can we use this as a dip? And honestly, you really truly can. Even a sliced bagel will work for this. Look at the way the sauce sticks to it. It really works. Look at the way the sauce sticks to it. And then all that Parmesan as well. It's pretty incredible. It might be too crunchy for me. I was just thinking that. Wow. Wait, it's really crunchy on the outside and then kind of soft in the center. That's like the ideal chip. It is very good. It does not taste like croutons. It's a lot better than I was expecting. I like it. The tiny ones are insanely crispy. Like, just listen to it. Okay, that was not crispy. <laughs> Let me try with this one. This is amazing. This is really, really good. 100% approved. I love the crunchiness. I love that it's still soft in the center. And most of all, I love the way the sauce just holds on to every chip. Like this is kind of superior to like a corn chip. These were truly some of the best food hacks, I would say ever, but definitely some of the best for this year. And you know that because I think we practically loved like 99% of the food hacks in this video, which usually it's like a, a negative 60-40. 60% of it is just, this is weird. I really love that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. I kind of want to do more of these compilations of like some of the best things that happened in this year, especially now at the end of the year. This is really fun for me. So if you want to watch that, please let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, switch my notifications on before you go so you don't miss out on future episodes. I love you guys and I will see you on my next video. Bye bye.